Hey, thanks for joining us today. We are the Web Heads United, and we're here to talk about creating a powerful first impression with your website. But first, before we get into that, I want everybody, we've got a great panel here of experts, and we're going to all go around and introduce ourselves. Let's start with Robert. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Robert Cox. I have a selfie in design, and I specialize in websites for the environmental sector. Awesome. And up next, Pia. Hi, everyone. I'm Pia Civiletti uh, from Sentient Associates, uh, where I do branding, website design, and marketing. Excellent. And up next, we have Arthur. Hi, guys. Arthur Moorhead. I build custom WordPress websites. Uh, the name of my business is Priority Web 365 where we rebuild trust in website development. Excellent, excellent. And we have Joshua. Hello, I'm Josh with Grassroots Consulting. I design, build, manage, and maintain the web presences for small business owners and everyday entrepreneurs. Excellent, thank you so much. And up next, Josh. Hey, my name is uh, Josh Collier with j &M Web Creations. Um, I do website design, website maintenance, some of the more technical stuff, as well as automations and local search engine optimization. Awesome. And Sam. Hey, everyone. My name is Sam Stromweiler. I am from Opusite Web Design. Uh, we help small businesses design and maintain uh, websites on WordPress, as well as help uh, marketing agencies become their white label fulfillment network for anything website related. Excellent. And my name is Tom Bartholomew, beautiful Northern Michigan here. I run Roofing Optimize, just like the name sounds. I do full service marketing for roofing contractors. So let's get into our topic of the day, our first impressions. And let's just kind of talk about right away, why do first impressions even matter? Who would like to take that? Why does a first impression? I mean, we hear this a lot, but why does that even matter? Pia, why don't you go ahead and give us your overview of it um yeah i mean first impressions of it when it comes to a website so i mean so a visitor comes to your website and right away something just turns them off it could be design it could be the text it doesn't seem like it you know it fit them or didn't resonate with them um or maybe they just they get there and they don't even know where to go maybe the uh navigation wasn't clear um, right there within, you know, a few seconds, you just lost the attention of that visitor and possibly a sale. So pretty much the top of the list as far as importance. I, I think that I, we would all agree. We're all shaking our head yes to that. J Joshua, you got your hand up. Why don't you go ahead and give us a little more insight? Yeah, I mean, everything Pia said is absolutely spot on. I mean, you know, the reality is, even if you're going to go choose a local restaurant for dinner, right? Let's say you've got Italian, you know, you want Italian food, right? You go to Google, you look at the Italian restaurant, you look at one website, you look at the next website. One of them shows you the pasta and the dishes and it feel, the atmosphere, you feel like you're there. The other one just looks like it was built in, you know, 2009 and it's not working, you know? you're clearly going to choose the one with the better website. And the reality is it might not mean they're the better place, but we're making value judgments based on the web presence that we see and people are doing it to you as well. So it might as well lean in and make that great first impression. And I'm sure we'll get into more on how we can, how we can do that. Awesome. What a great example. I love Italian food. So I'm sure I've done many of those searches. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about first impressions. So we now we kind of understand that that's really important to have a first, a great first impression because people are, you know, we talk about uh, attention spans and attention spans are nowadays three seconds or less, right? So if you don't have a great first impression, they're going to be out of there. So what would some of our consistent design elements that we should use or what would be some examples of making it our website so people would stick around that great first impression what are some elements to that great first impression uh josh let's hear uh, your insights as more of on the technical side if if they get there and they never see your site because it takes so long to load that's a huge thing so they don't even get to see whether it's a good site or a bad site 
So, I mean, speed right off the bat is a huge thing because people, yes, like you said, it's three seconds or less. You kind of want your site to um, load that quickly um, and not just on the uh, computer or the desktop, but also on the mobile. Absolutely. What would be one tip that everybody could use, Josh, that would make their website load faster? Something easy. What could what would be something that? They could do. Normally, it's um, compressing your images. That's the biggest thing I see. Having images that still look good, but they are actually a, a decent size. So they're not giant. They're not something you're going to use for printing because that's going to be a lot bigger. So something that's compressed down will usually be the biggest issues I see. Awesome images. Absolutely. Pio, what would you like to contribute to that? Well, I mean, you know, the first impression, you always have the, you know, top part of the screen. What is the visitor seeing when they're going to your website? Right now, you know, the trend is because um, people are so inundated with online information. If it's not social media ads, but everything's on a website. Um, and people are looking for authenticity. And if someone goes to your website, and it doesn't seem like it's authentic to them. It doesn't resonate with them. Um, of course, they're you know they're just going to leave. So having that top you know graphic or text or both being authentic to not only your brand but authentic to your target audience. Do you know who your target audience is, and are you being authentic to them? So I would say that's like one of the main things. Um, you know, that you want to make sure is right there up front when somebody is uh, visiting your website. I think authenticity is is very, very important. Absolutely. Robert, what would you like to contribute to this? I would say having um, uh, great engaging imagery at the front of the above the fold and also clearly stating what you all can offer to the viewer or the user. I think that's great. Above the fold, it's an old newspaper term. So that's what you see right when it first loads the website above the fold. And you're right, you got to have a nice image right there. Because if it's all text, that's really kind of boring, isn't it? We want to make sure that we're we're on top of that. Awesome. So when we're talking about, you know, that our making that great first impression and captivating our vis visitors, great imagery and all of this authenticity, you know, what would be another way that you know they get to the front we got this great image some real catchy text and they start scrolling down how else could we make a great first impression joshua yeah kind of kind of piggybacking on that above the fold concept the, I, I think that there's a psychological factor and i'll explain what i mean when people see balance and they see cleanliness and they see um, the colors play well with each other, and they see that beautiful image that Robert's talking about, and they see it all in a very balanced way um, that doesn't make their brain go, where do I look? Or their eyes go, where do I look? What, do I, what am I looking at? What am I seeing? When everything comes together in a clean way, um, it, it, it draws you in, it engages. And it's a psychological thing. And you, you could test it yourself. Go to any random website or the next website you go to. Just take a look when you first land on that site. Is it is it compelling? Is it drawing you in? Or are you kind of like, what, what is this? I need to scroll down. So before you even get them to think about scrolling down, it's really important to make sure that they feel a um, sense of, of sort of peace almost, a sense of like, this feels right. That's my two cents. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned colors. And I'd like to elaborate on that a little bit and maybe a little color psychology or or why having the same, you know, good brand colors throughout your website. So we don't want to just have random colors and have, you know, just throw on anything. Why would we want to have that consistent color theme or maybe why why do those colors matter? Pia. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a color freak. So I just, that's like my favorite part of designing the website is going, you know, is looking at the colors and it goes back to, again, you know, what are, what are you trying to attract and who are you trying to attract? 
and what is their uh, what are their likes and dislikes? What emotion do you want to elicit when people come to the website? And when you look at the color psychology, and I mean this 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 starts out when you're a baby, even when you're designing your baby's room, right? You want you're sitting there. What do I want my baby to experience? Do you want things to be bright or do you want them to be to be calm? So you may you know decorate the room with you know lighter pastels or sage thing, you know, light greens, things like that, where when they wake up, they're like, oh, okay, this is so nice and calm. Or, you know, when they're in their room, do you want their brain to be turned on because they're seeing bright yellows and reds and blues? Same thing happens when you go to a website. You know, if, uh, you know, you're, if you are doing a luxury brand and you want to use colors that elicit luxury, using like the gold yellows, the black, the white, so, you know, something that really start um difference and things like that but things that say luxury right same thing as if you're doing a website for um that has products for children you want you know it to be real colorful and attractive to a child um you know and then when it, you go down into really the psychology of the of the colors um you know if you go for yellow right so yellow is a bright it makes people happy it kind of opens your eyes when you see it um, so it's, you know, same thing, you know, red, a lot of people say, you know, red is just like, you know, really kind of opens your eyes. It's bright. It's in your face. You know, what do you want your end user, your visitor to, you know, feel when they go to your website, you know, blue, do you want them to feel calm? Um, it's, it's so, and you, you look, I would suggest looking up the color wheel, um, looking up color psychology, and you can get a description of every color, what it means, what emotion elicits, and even what industry, you know, a lot of times like technology industry goes with blue, right? It signifies um, serious integrity and trust and professionalism. So, you know, you might go with the blue, but there's, you know, there's a color for all the different types of industries and also the different type of emotion or, you know, say quality of product if you're in a luxury brand type of thing. So there's so much around color. So I'll, I'll uh, pass it on to the next person so they can uh, elaborate on that. I, I think that that's what a great description. You know, there's a lot of psychology behind it. And, and I loved what you said that, you know, make sure that you're matching the color to the person or whatever that you're you're targeting. And I think that I'm going to throw in there that it's a great idea to make sure that you have a buyer persona. So you know exactly who you're talking to, who your marketing message is geared towards. And there's a lot of resources online where you can find that. So make sure you have a buyer persona so you can pick the right colors for that person. You notice all of us, the web heads, we're technology, we're using blue right so that's that's one thing you can see right away with us sam let's hear from you for a minute here for sure he is absolutely right there's so much around color i think we could do a whole session just on color alone um, and how it contributes to your website and then how it elicits emotions for your your buyer um, a couple points to mention that kind of go away from the emotional side of color is um, how do you use color in your navigation to make it consistent across the site and so that your users know where to click on your website, what is a call to action or a button versus what is just simply text? Um, and how do you want to structure attention grabbing text versus maybe some body text that's on the page? And I think that's really important to figure out early on is which colors will you use for those navigational elements. The other point I wanted to mention is actually the opposite, the lack of color. Um, lack of color is also super important when it comes to website design because we want to give users a bit of a break when it comes to an overwhelming amount of stimulation on the website. We want to make sure we have adequate white space in between sections, in between elements, so that users have a chance to breathe. Um, and they also have that clear distinction line of where a section ends or where a piece of information content ends and where the next one begins. Um, early in, in kind of website design development, you saw a lot of websites using really strong colored backgrounds, like a black background, a neon green background. I think we've gone away from that practice because we figured out that it's kind of overwhelming to the, the end user. And we want to make sure they have enough chance to breathe and digest that information. So definitely lack of color is important when you're thinking about what colors to be using on the site. 
Yeah, what a great point. White space. That has definitely came on in the last, I would say, five years where people are adding a lot more white space. And it lets your elements on your page, your text and photos, it lets them breathe. You got to give them that space so they can, you can see it. So it has that impact. Great points. Robert, let's hear what, uh, what you have on this topic. Yeah, to add to uh, Pia's extensive list are in various colors. Uh... One that I use a lot in my websites is uh, the color green, uh, which is generally emblematic of the environmental industry and environmental type things. And also use different natural colors like lighter browns to represent the earth and uh, light blues for the sky. So you can create a whole atmosphere or mood using the different colors. And it, it talked about what Sam had talked about with the white space. Uh, if you look at the blogs that did on architects and what a website designed by them might look like. Well, architects use a lot of white space in their building to create different effects to bring the outside in or the outs the inside out or whatever effect you're trying to build. And you can do that in your website as well. I love that. Taking inspiration from other industries like architecture. What a what a great, what a great insight there. So I think, you know, we've talked a lot about this stuff. I want to touch on one topic real quick is how, how can we kind of find out what we should be doing? What would be some way to, to, to learn about this stuff? How, who should we research someone or check out our competitors or what should we do to kind of find out what is maybe our industry standard for our own industry? Like we're all here, we're in marketing. So we, we look at this stuff all the time in web design, but maybe for somebody that's not in web design, how could they find out, you know, best practices or anything like that? Joshua. Uh, hire one of us. That would be my, my quick to the point. But what, what I mean by that is, you know, I think it's you can read all kinds of articles and you can read about theory and you can read about psychology, all these great things we talked about. And it's all great. But, you know, working hand in hand with somebody who's going to and especially on the brand development side, because a lot of what we're talking about is related to branding, you know, and, and, and finding a partner who not only understands the theory, but really can understand you and help you draw out your expression, right? Because, you know, I, I often tell my clients when I have conversations around colors and stuff, I say, you know, definitely go and research and look at colors and what they mean. But at the same time, don't forget to look at your own home, look at the walls that you chose to paint in those colors, like Pia was mentioning with the baby room, look at your furniture, look at the clothing, I love orange, look at what I'm wearing, I just love orange. So your expression, you've already got it. It's in your jewelry. It's in your clothing. It's in your curtains. It's in your paintings on the wall. And if you're a, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you know, make sure you, that you include your own self-expression through color and through imagery, which is also related to color, um, that, that, that reflects who you are and what you do. And don't lean a hundred percent on experts and theories. It's great to reference and, and meaning, but don't forget, don't neglect your own tastes because your ideal clients are like you and they're going to like what you like. Awesome. Awesome. That's uh, some great insight. Ha have some hire a professional, especially business owners are busy. They don't always have time to do all the research and find out all this information. So like Joshua said, hire a professional, work with somebody that already knows. Pia. Yeah. So what I like to do with my clients is talk to them about, you know, their branding strategy. And uh, a lot of companies don't ever go uh, through that. And I think even nowadays, because a lot of uh, marketing businesses or, or companies that are, you know, helping entrepreneurs or small, small companies get out there are skipping over a lot of the stuff where they really make it kind of the short thing go, you know, let's build a funnel and get your stuff out there. And it's like, well, whoa, wait a minute. Like, do you even know who you are? Do you, do you know who your customers are? Um, I think, you know, competitive analysis is definitely important to see who in your industry that you like and that you think is actually attracting the same target audience. What, you know, what are they doing? What does their website look like? Um, and I think it really depends on, you know, how much of you you put into the image of your organization depends on what you're selling. If you're selling, you know, a product that is separate from you right? 
may not be as important to put you in that the sales of the the image and the and the feel and look it really is focusing on what is your customer going to be attracted to and so that is you know it's important to do that competitive analysis um, with things like that if it is something where you're a coach um or it's something that's very kind of um, in line with who you are and you're selling you as the service then that's where you want to Again, go back to being authentic. Is the look and the colors and that the whole scheme, is it you? Does it represent you? And, and also, does it represent what you're selling to the target audience? Because again, when it comes down to it, if you are not you know, a replica of your target audience, then you may not want it to look like just you. And so you got to keep that in mind. And it really does go back to figuring out what you're selling and how you're selling it and what's your target audience and 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 how is that congruent? And then you could go figure out, well, what does that mean for color and imagery and the look and feel and what kind of emotion you want to uh, elicit when someone visits your website? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think one thing that I'd like to touch on real quick before we wrap this up is we talked about colors influencing people and the imagery and the content. And I think one another thing that we can utilize to really influence our design is the font, the style of font. And I think that that can really make a big impression. If you're trying to be professional, you don't want to use, you know, Comic Sans, which is a, you know, a, a kid like font, right? We don't want to, you want to make sure you stay away from that. So. So make sure that your font is representing your brand very well. But I think we covered a lot of great information here today. Uh, we're the Web Heads United. You can find there's an article that we have that we just published from Joshua Moth. He published it. He wrote it on our website, webheadsunited.com. You can go there and check out the resources and articles. And you'll see it on there, creating a powerful first impression with your website is the article. So check it out and check out the web, the web heads. And we're always here to help you guys out. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.